Welcome again, friends. So, as I was just mentioning, uh, today's webinar, this sharing will be based on this book, The Essence of Self-Realization, The Wisdom of Paramahansa Yogananda, recorded, compiled, and edited by his disciple, Swami Kriyananda. I read that because this book is really a treasure, and thanks to Swamiji that we have these sayings of Master and uh, his tireless, uh, Swamiji's tireless effort of writing these down when Master would speak these uh, counseling or any any sort of thing which Master would share with any of his disciples and Swamiji was there writing it down. So it's just wonderful that we get these words directly from Master. And today we'll be talking on a chapter, uh, like we know we have been covering uh, each week one chapter from this book. So this week the chapter is General Counsel. And I was just sharing with a friend of mine before coming here, I was telling this is one of the most easiest topics to, disc to share and also one of the most difficult. Easiest because Master, it's general counsel, you can talk about uh, everything almost which Master shared, but also difficult because uh, it doesn't have just one particular topic. In this particular chapter, uh, there are uh, conversations about seclusion, environment, um, renunciation, attitudes, uh, and so many things. And how do you really compress all these things in just uh, you know, one short discussion or one short sharing? But uh, I thought I'll just handpick a few uh, topics and we can share about them. So the first thing I would like to talk about in this is about environment. Uh, many of us know that Master often said, and so did Swamiji, environment is stronger than willpower. So let's start first with a short reading, a quote from Master, and then we can have a discussion. The company you keep is important. If you leave your coat in a room where people are smoking, pretty soon it will smell of smoke. If you leave it outside in the garden, later on when you bring it indoors, it will carry with it the fragrance of fresh air and flowers. Such is the case with the mind. Your garment of thoughts absorbs the vibrations of those with whom you mix. If you mingle with pessimists, in time you will become a pessimist. And if you mingle with cheerful, happy people, you yourself will develop a cheerful, happy nature. Environment is stronger than willpower. To mix with worldly people without absorbing at least some of their worldliness requires great spiritual strength. And he shares much more about this, environment is stronger than willpower. Many of us, by our own personal experience, if we have even a little bit of meditation practice, would know that sometimes we find it very easy when we are in a group setting to meditate. Sometimes we find it so easy to just get rid of all our moods when we walk into the satsang, or we, when we tune into something like a webinar, or when we are talking to a guru bhai. But then there are also times when we are struggling on our own. We find like, how, how will I meditate? I'm finding it so hard to meditate when we are on our own. I'm finding it so hard to keep my thoughts of just about Master, just about Swami, just, just about God. How, how do I do it? But the same mind, when you bring it in an environment which is so conducive and the, uh, the vibrations are so helpful that you walk into a center or you tune into a webinar, and suddenly you find that, where are those thoughts? Uh, in the autobiography of a yogi, uh, Master shares that when many times his thoughts would change the moment he would enter Sri Yukteswarji's ashram. And many friends also in Ananda and also uh, many of them share that uh, when you walk in the presence of a saint or when in an environment where people are all seeking God, their thoughts automatically turn upwards. Many times there would be people who would have a list of questions that I would like to ask this to Swamiji. And many people have shared that the moment they would go in his company, all their questions would, would dissolve. And the moment they would come back again in their routine, regular environment, all these thoughts, all these questions, all these doubts will come up again. One wonders how. Well, the answer is very simple. Environment is stronger than willpower. But how do we keep ourselves in an environment which is uh, helpful to us, which is supportive of our spiritual growth? Master said that be in an environment which helps you. And if 
you will observe one quality or the other based on the environment you are your thoughts are not your own master would say thoughts are universally and not individually rooted so i would like to also share some tricks we can do when we find ourselves in environment where we have to get into an environment which is which we know is not going to be very supportive and swami ji shared that when you know that you're you're going to go in an environment which is going to be disharmonious let us say then what do you do one thing you could do is meditate beforehand try to center yourself try to make yourself strong in your spine so that when you have to face this situation these people or anything for that ma matter you will find that when you've meditated centered yourself and you're very strong in yourself things don't affect you much but on the other hand if you're not in your center if your thoughts are not on god then it is very easy to just lose track of where we are but then there are also times then where you cannot really have control over the environment we would love to be in spiritual environment all the time but can we sometimes it's not hard then what do we do well we try to do the best we can we use many tools and techniques like youtube videos of swami ji youtube videos of acharyas take a harmonium start chanting listen to chants listen to swami ji's music if you can't do any of these just call a guru bhai L tune into a webinar which you're doing right now and so uh, read a spiritual book read a book uh, which swami ji had written which a uh, master had written or just silence introspection these things are so wonderful to just nurture yourself to have yourself be yourself in an environment uh, which is not very helpful sometimes and then you might say then but still why does god you know put us in situations which are not really helpful to me i have observed in my own life that many times i have been pushed in an environment i didn't want to because it was not comfortable uh, but these are sometimes ways we, uh, in how we grow if you notice god is really you know trying to encourage you would you like to put more will power more energy and i have seen so many times that when i am in an environment which is completely crazy when i am not able to do anything uh, where the environment is not very spiritually uplifting uh, what what do you do and i found my will power had increased those days those times because i was trying to put more will i was trying to put more effort in my conscious and my conscious i was putting more conscious attempt to tune into god to tune into master to tune into swami ji and i would do constantly japa which otherwise if i was in a spiritual environment i might not have done i would have taken things for granted but the moment i was in an environment which was not very helpful what did i i had no choice i had to raise my energy i had to raise my will power and so the next time and there is a very beautiful story of swami ji uh, with some of the other uh, members of ananda devi ji often shares this story that once they were in in the us i forget which uh, city is this uh, it was saturday night late in the night and they had just finished uh, a movie they had gone for a movie they walked out and the moment they walked out they knew they had to walk quite a distance before they reached to the car where they could go but in between from the place they were and to the place they had to walk there was all kinds of things happening late in the night in this city in the us and then what would they do what could they do swami ji was right in front and all the other members were just behind him and devi ji said that she felt that swami ji was putting more energy he was just as if giving out energy and surrounding himself with an aura that nothing outside could disturb them nothing outside could affect them so when you find yourself in an environment which is not harmonious instead of being passive try to give instead of reacting try to act proactively be in the direction of giving instead of receiving and you will find that it helps you extremely in uh, many times when we are just in the mode of receptive being receptive uh, receptive not in the uh, not in terms of open hearted but in terms of being passive when we are passive many times we find that outer circumstances have an upper role but when we are giving we find that they do not have that much of an effect on us so going uh, continuing on this topic master also said churned milk turns to butter which floats on water whole milk however mingles with water and is diluted by it 
Even so, once the mind has been churned to the butter of self-realization, it is no longer affected by worldly influences. Then he goes on, The ordinary devotee, however, must choose his company carefully. If possible, he should strictly avoid environments that are incompatible with his inner search for God. Sri Yukteswarji once said, Master, that when you have to mix with others, have the presence of a spiritual bodyguard. And when Master shared this with one of his disciples, he said, Master, but what if I'm alone? And don't we always sometimes think, oh, what, what if I'm alone? What if I don't have Guru Bhais? What if I'm not closer to a place where I can tune into a spiritual environment? Well, Master's answer was very interesting. He said, he asked or he said, am I not always with you? And we sometimes think that, oh, we have this life, we have to deal with it on our own. I have this problem, I have that problem. I was sharing with a friend of mine once that, oh, there are so many troubles. How do I solve all these problems? How do I do all these things? How do I serve in all these ways? And I had this thought at the back of my mind that I was doing it all. And I was doing it all alone. But we forget many times that we are not alone. If we can just remember at those times, these words of Master, am I not always with you? And with, that just, with just that presence, that He is around us, He is with us. Uh, if you would remember Master's words, to those who think me near, I will be near. And am I not always with you? So if you can think about Him, if you can think Him closer with you, if he's eating through you, if he's talking to a friend through you, if he's reading a book through you, if he's doing your job through you, then why not? We will have our own environment, which we don't have to really sometimes depend on the outer environment. Because most of our lives, let's face it, we don't always have the luxury of being in an environment which is supportive. Many times we have to face environments which are disharmonious. And those times, we cannot just like that say, oh, the environment is disharmonious. We have to put the right amount of energy. But then how? Am I not always with you? Think of Master in those times and you will find that your level of even handling situations just goes up and up and up. And you'll be able to deal with life in a much better way, in a much more beautiful way. And, and I was just reminded of one more story of Master, which I think I'll share after this uh, quote. Let's see. Okay, yeah. It is better to live in hell with one wise man than in heaven with ten fools. This again is something talking about environment is stronger than willpower. And if we have read the book Autobiography of a Yogi, we would remember that there was a time when uh, uh, the disciples of Sri Yukteswar were finding it so hard to just be cope up with Sri Yukteswar sometimes because Sri Yukteswar was very strict. He was a very strict disciplinarian. And many of his disciples told Master that, you know, we are done. <laughs> More or less they said, we are done. You come, you lead us, you teach us, you preach us, we will follow you. And Master's answer was very direct and very specific. He said, you go if you want to. I, uh, I am not telling the right words, I'm more or less paraphrasing, not even paraphrasing, I'm telling the story in effect. Uh, what he meant was uh, that you go, but I will stick to my Guru. Because he knew that no matter how difficult the life was outwardly, he was under the company of, or under the training of a great avatar, a Gyan avatar. So always remember that outwardly, even if you feel that life is difficult, life is hell, but if you're in the company of your guru, if you're in the company of guru bhais in the right environment, then it doesn't matter. On the other hand, if outwardly you have easy situations, easy circumstances, and easy just everything is easy, well, it need not be the best thing which is really good for your own spiritual growth. So how do we really decide what, what is hell and what is heaven? What is really important is how important it is in helping us grow inwardly. 
I think we have time for one more quote. And in this, I would like to share about uh, how Master very beautifully brings a very esoteric topic of Kundalini and brings it down. When we talk about something like Kundalini, we often think of something very esoteric. The energy rises up the spine and goes down, which is all true. But are we really understanding that can we have spiritual growth without right spiritual attitudes? So here he shares, let's see. Your mental attitudes are important. Spiritual progress isn't only a matter of practicing the yoga techniques. Every time you think good thoughts, the kundalini begins to move upward. Every time you hate people or hold harsh thoughts about them, the kundalini automatically moves downward. When you love others selflessly or think kind thoughts about them, it moves up the spine. Kundalini is not awakened by techniques alone. I'll read those last two lines. When you love others selflessly or think kind thoughts about them, it moves up the spine. Kundalini is not awakened by techniques alone. Isn't that beautiful? I had this very, very uh, poor notion of the spiritual path before I came and I started really meditating that to be spiritual you had to be cold and you had to be unfeeling and you had it didn't matter how people are, how people feel. What, ma what really mattered was my well-being. Well, it is not so. What does Master share over there? If we can love people selflessly, every time we have a good thought, our kundalini rises, it moves up the spine. Every time we have some thought of hate, jealousy, anger, it moves down the spine. So, can we reach the goal of self-realization without backing it with the right spiritual attitudes? Well, I don't think so. And this particular paragraph has been really helpful for me to just understand that how important are attitudes and how important is God's grace behind uh, the self-realization, behind the oneness with God which we are seeking. Not just by techniques alone. We can sit throughout our life just meditating, doing techniques, and without that right devotion, right spiritual growth, uh, right spiritual attitudes, we will not go far. But with just the right amount of right attunement, not right amount, with just the right attunement, the right devotion, we can quickly be there. And maybe we, not, we don't meditate that long as others do. And why compare? We may not meditate as long as we would like to want to meditate. But if we have that inner attunement, we will get there. Dear friends, thank you for sharing. Thank you for being online. I hope that these talks are all helpful for you because I still remember that I, was in, I used to be in environments which were not very conducive like I was sharing in the beginning. But these talks really helped me to be in tune with Master, with Swamiji. May you have a very good evening. Joy to you. Thank you.